What's going on friends? One of the best weekend projects you can do is adjusting your motorcycle to fit you. But most of the time we're generally just adjusting the stock parts on the bike. But you might even consider swapping out for a different set of handlebars to change the look of your bike. Now this isn't necessarily a super hard job, but there's definitely some things you want to consider before you get started trying to do a bar swap. Most times, just adjusting the bars and the stock clamps, this is good enough for most riders. But if you're really wanting to change the look of your bike to get that look that you're really after, most times the stock bars just won't do for you. A handlebar swap will dramatically alter the appearance of your motorcycle as well as the handling. So if you're going with anything taller or wider than stock, your job likely just got a lot more complicated. Please don't forget if you enjoyed the video today, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Changing out mirrors, reservoir caps, bar clamps, these are pretty simple things to do. But if you get into swapping out cables, changing hydraulic lines, moving switches, or customizing other parts, this is where things really start to get in depth and it's going to really eat up a lot of your time. Depending on how wide, how tall, or just plain different your new bars are than your stock ones, if you don't have everything all ready to go in one place, you could go from a one weekend job turning into several weeks while you're waiting on parts that you didn't anticipate needing. Now, the cost of handlebars is actually very appealing when you initially look at the price. Considering you can get a set of handlebars from anywhere from $100 to $500, depending on what brand, if you go with the Harley bars or if you go with aftermarket, just how fancy you want to get, whether they're internally wired, pre-wired, the list just keeps going. But initially buying the bars, it seems like a pretty cheap and easy thing to do. You might even decide to keep your factory handlebars and just install a really trick set of risers. Well, even just installing a trick set of risers can put you in the same situation you would be with a complete bar swap. Now, most motorcycles only come with enough length in the electrical wiring, the cables, and the hydraulic lines to accommodate the stock bars. Also a hydraulic line for the clutch if you happen to have one of those fancy hydraulic clutches. So if you're planning on doing a bar swap on your bike, you really need to take all of these parts into account before you start the bar swap. Now in some cases, and very rarely, you might actually get lucky and be able to reroute your cables, your electrical lines, maybe even your brake or clutch hydraulic lines, and maybe get yourself an extra inch or two but that is very rare because, as I mentioned, generally all those are made to accommodate the stock bar's height and width, and there's really not a, little, a lot of wiggle room there. On the flip side of that, no two bar swaps are the same, so you might get lucky gaining a couple extra inches, rerouting everything, but generally you don't have enough length to be able to turn your wheel lock to lock safely. Best thing to do, especially if you have any doubt of being able to turn your bars from lock to lock, is to just go ahead and go with some lengthened aftermarket cables, hydraulic lines, and we'll talk about a little bit of electrical wiring and getting that lengthened too. Fortunately, there are a lot of aftermarket companies out there that make complete kits, depending on your motorcycle, to help make your bar swap a complete success. Unfortunately, this is the part where the appealing price of a bar swap just went up significantly, really depending on what bike that you have. But not to worry, there are some things you can do to help save a little bit of money if you're on a budget, and we'll talk about that a little later in the video. Depending on your bike, and if you have a throttle by wire, a cable throttle, or a hydraulic clutch, there are different kits out there that are going to have extenders for your electrical wiring that are actually going to plug in line to your harness to help extend those wires to actually fit the height and width of your new bars. Now, the price really depends on what bike you have and what your, what your setup is, whether you have that cable clutch, you have a hydraulic clutch, throttle by wire, cable throttle, any combination of that in between. The prices are really going to vary anywhere from $200 for an all cable control to upwards of $400 if you have electronic control mixed with cable control. Now, one thing to keep in mind with a bar installation kit is that these are only going to come with what was stock on the bike that you're trying to lengthen, especially when it comes to electronic accessories. If you have aftermarket electronic accessories, whether they're from Harley Davidson or they're from a third party aftermarket manufacturer, these are gonna require you to basically be on your own to get that link to hook up those aftermarket accessories. Now, of course, if you bought those from Harley Davidson, 
they're definitely going to have some wiring that will plug directly in to help extend it so you really don't have to cut anything. But if it's just straight up aftermarket, you're likely going to be on your own to lengthen those wires. Now, if you're on a budget, there's really no way around getting new cables. You can't just stretch them out, and there's really no good way to lengthen a throttle cable or a clutch cable. But you can do something with your hydraulic lines and also with the electrical wiring if you're on a budget and you can't really afford that extra to go buy brand new lines or buy the plug-ins that are going to extend the wiring up to the bars. But a great way to save a little bit of money is if you have access to a shop that deals in hydraulic and rubber hoses. You can actually take your brake lines or even your clutch line down to a shop like that, and more often than not, they'll be able to build you a longer line right there while you wait with your exact same fittings, and this can be quite cost effective rather than just going out and buying one. Nobody really likes to cut their wiring harness, but if you absolutely have to, you could go ahead and extend your wiring by yourself, just cutting it, and if you do have to do that and add some wire in there to lengthen it a little bit, just make sure you get a good straight inline connection and make sure you solder that those joints really, really well. And with older motorcycles, this may honestly be your only option. There's nothing wrong with lengthening the wires. As I mentioned, just make sure you solder those connections very well and put some heat shrink over them for a nice, clean, watertight finish. But generally on Harley-Davidson's, you can pretty much get accessories like that to lengthen wires for pretty much any year or model of Harley out there. So just a simple handlebar swap can be a very involved process, but you can save yourself a lot of time and a lot of headache by doing your research first and really trying to make sure that you have everything you're going to need all in one place before you start. If you've ever gone out and priced having your handlebars swapped over at a shop, you can kind of see why now it is so expensive to have that done. While it's not necessarily an extremely hard job, but it is very time consuming to do. Swapping out your hydraulic lines like your front brake and your clutch, this is also going to require bleeding the system, which isn't really necessarily a bad thing because you're going to have brand new brake fluid in there and you're going to be good to go for about another two years. Properly getting the cables and the electrical wiring run, this can even require removal of the fuel tank, number one, to make the job easier, and also to prevent damage to the fuel tank when you're banging around down there trying to route everything. And if you have a touring bike, in most cases, it's actually going to require the entire front fairing to be removed to gain the access needed, also to prevent damage. So if you're paying to have this done at a shop, you're on the clock for all this additional work that's required with those handlebars on top of the handlebars and on top of the installation kit, depending on whether you needed a bunch of electrical extensions, longer cables, longer hoses. If you're planning on doing a bar swap yourself, I hope this gave you some things to think about. And if you're out getting quotes for a shop to do a bar swap on you, I hope I prepared you a little bit for kind of what that could cost. Because no joke, that could be upwards of almost $1,000 to get a bar swap done at a shop, depending on what bike you have. A bar swap can be very labor intensive, but it for sure is something you can get done in a weekend if you have all the proper parts with you ready to go. But guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But until next week, guys, you stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge the cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.